New Year's and everything to try to impress anybody or sound spiritual or anything like that. Uh, we we just do it because it's Sunday, and, and and if you're if you want to come to church, you ought to be able to come to church. And if you can't, you can't. Uh, so uh, full schedule of services right on through the winter. It don't matter whose birthday it is, mine or anybody else's. It don't matter if it's Fourth uh, July, Christmas. Our schedule never changes. We've never called off one service since we started, and I want to keep that keep it keep it like that. Uh, if it snows two foot, if, we can, if you can get here, come on, amen. And if you can't, don't worry about it. Um, and that way, you don't have to call a radio station or something like that and see if shining lights having church. If we can, if my motto has always been, if I can, I'm gonna be here. And the only reason I ain't here is, is I can't. That's my motto. I mean, if I take off to preach somewhere or else or something like that. Other than that, uh, when it, when it, and, I, and I'm that way when I'm gone too. I go to church when I'm gone in a, in a church building if I can find one that preaches it right. All right. Uh, so let's, uh, that's, I just want to mention that because people ask all every year what's our schedule. And, and it's the same as it is out there on the sign. All right. Philippians chapter 2. Now, now tonight, I, I try, when we're doing these studies, I try to not get bogged down. Uh, sometimes preachers do that. When they're teaching through a book, they'll get hung up on it, stay out three or four weeks, right? And first thing you know, it starts to become, it drags, it drags. And I try not to do that. I try to move fast enough to keep something fresh coming all the time, but yet slow enough that we get the, at least the part of the meat of the Scripture. But the night, the, the, the Verses that we're hit tonight are so outstanding and so, I mean, absolutely majestic, monumental, inspired, unbelievably great. I'm going to have to go slower and slow down on these tonight. The verses that we're going to read tonight, to me, are some of the most eloquent, greatest verses in the whole Bible. And it's Philippians chapter 2. And look at verse number five. We looked at a little bit of this last week. Went over at that dinner and I did not have time to get into it. But look at look, verse number five. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. I mean, boy, we ought to have the mind of Christ. You want to know how to think about stuff? Think how Jesus would think about it. Man, that, that'll, that'll straighten us up right there. We just live by that one verse. Just that one verse. Amen. That's one of them hard, easy to preach and hard practice, ain't it? Uh, look here at verse number six. Who, this is the great verses, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. It ain't Yeshua, it's Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Now that ain't happened yet. That ain't happened yet. Every knee in the, hey, millions of people ain't never bowed their knee to Jesus. But guess what? They're going to. Look at verse 11. Every tongue. You reckon the devil's got a tongue? If he does, he'll have to confess Jesus is Lord before they throw him in the lake of fire. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know what that means, people? We win in the end. I'm glad I went ahead and confessed him as Lord when I was 18 years old. I got it done. You're going to do it willingly now or against your will then. Now, let's, let's look at this divine. I, I feel like I'm on holy ground reading them words. That's some of the greatest words in the whole Bible. Look at back, back five. Back five. What I try to have, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we did mention it last week. Uh, verse four and verse five. Would solve the world's problems if everybody do it. Look not on the things of other, on things, but every man on things of others. Verse four, that'd solve the whole world's problems. 
if we just wouldn't think about me, 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 I want this, I don't like this, I want that, and I don't like that, and I do like that, and I don't, that's what everybody's problem is. They're hung up on themselves. Ain't that right? You know what breaks up marriages and breaks up, causes fights and stuff? People want their self. They want to satisfy their self. That's why selfies are so popular. Oh, I look good in this one, and I look good in that one. And the truth is, you don't look good in none of them. Uh, somebody told you you was pretty, and it went to your head, what happened to you? But uh, 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 you know what? Uh, it it uh, if, if we'd all take that to heart, just like Jesus, whatever you would men do to you, do to them. My mom said that all the time. Treat people the way you want them to treat you. Now, if you think about that, that would put the court system out of business. There wouldn't be no use for the cops. All those liberals out west that want to defund the police, tell them to practice that right there and won't even need no cops. But son, they, they practice the opposite of that. They, they practice. The, our generation, our generation is, uh, is, is, the opposite of that. Our generation teaches, you've lived for other people long enough. About time you started living for yourself. That's what our generation teaches. That's a lie, brother. That this, our generation says, you've lived long enough for other people. Our generation says, here's what our generation says, the main thing is that you're happy. You ever hear anybody tell you that? That's the stupidest thing. Anybody that tells you that life, Adam. I think the main thing in life, the main thing in life ain't being happy, you nut. The main thing in happy is being right, being holy. God wants you to be holy. Then as you're holy, he'll bless you with happiness. I had people tell me that. But years ago when I was going through a hard time, people come to me and say, now, Danny, the main thing is that you're happy. And I didn't want to hurt their feelings or nothing, but I thought, you're crazy. That ain't the main thing. That ain't the main thing. It don't matter if I'm happy or not. I'm, I'm supposed to do right. God really don't owe it to us to make us happy. Now, you are happy when you're right, but it just comes as an extra benefit. Your illustration of the guy going down the road, he said, I ain't happy. I ain't happy. How come I can't be happy? How come I can't be happy? How come I can't be happy? I'm just never happy. I'm never happy. I'm never happy. And uh, finally, he pulls over and said, Lord, it don't really matter if I'm happy or not. I want to do your will. I'm going to serve you and go to church and help people out and be a blessing and everything. Thank you, Lord. I don't deserve to be happy. I don't matter if I'm ever happy. And he takes off down the road like that, and somebody gets in the car beside him. He said, who are you? He said, happiness. He said, where'd you come from? He said, oh, I just ride along with them that want to serve the Lord. And that's true. And then he starts saying, oh, boy. Happiness. I love you, happiness. I love you, happiness. And he gets out. Amen. As soon as you love happiness, he gets out. And you start saying, I'm sorry, Lord. I love you. Happiness gets in back in there with you. The way to be happy is serve the Lord. This is what happiness is to love the Savior, living a life in his in my behavior, having a change in my behavior. Happiness is the Lord. That little song like that. Uh, I'm happy in right, down right, out right, whatever that song is. Low down, happy all the time. Uh, that little song kids say, <laughs> in right, up right, out right, down right, not down, low down. I'm low down, I am low down. Uh, but I, I don't make me happy. I'm happy because I got right with the Lord. You give up. You give up your own desires and your own goals and your own dreams, and happiness just slides up beside you. He's elusive. You try to grab him, he slips out. You, you stay, keep your eyes on the Lord, and it don't matter whether you have it or not, then he gets in. See, that's the way it works. And uh, uh, like he said, verse 21, all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But let's, let's look at this a little bit. Our generation says you have to look out for you. You have to look out for yourself now. And, and I understand that. There is such a thing as you have. Uh, our generation says everybody's being mean to you. Fight them back. You are your own little center of your own solar system. And the whole moon, stars, sun, planets revolve around you and what you want. I mean, a little kid somewhere had a little shirt and it says, uh, it is all about me. You know where that kid's headed? Drugs, jail. Uh, that's where that kid's headed. 
You teach a kid the whole world revolves around him, you go, you're raising a brat. Uh, uh, that's what you're doing. But anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's move on down to the scripture I really want to get to tonight. And it's the incarnation, since it is Christmas time, and I didn't plan it like this. But he said, uh, verse 6, he's equal with God. And we studied last week, I told you how you could find the Trinity in the Bible. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. And then we showed you how that uh, uh, verse number 7, made himself of no reputation. Made himself of no reputation. Isn't that something? Uh, so Jesus didn't, uh, Jesus didn't, uh, uh, he, he didn't go around promoting himself. As a matter of fact, you ever notice all the times he'd do a miracle for somebody and he'd say, just go home. Don't, don't even go, to, don't broadcast this around. He didn't want all that attention on him at that time. And uh, that, that's, that's something else. He made himself of no reputation and became obedient. Classic example of a servant and authority. And he said um, uh, he was equal with God being in the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Now there's where you, you get your trinity. In verse two, verse 6, he's equal with God. In verse 7, he's the likeness of men. So that's why we're talking about Christmas. Christmas is a story of God manifesting himself in a, in a manger as a baby. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Mary? Here's your baby and it's God. Mary? Changing his diaper, feeding him, and it's God in flesh. People say, that's ridiculous. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. That happened. The angel told Mary, he said, that, that thing that's in your womb is a, is, a, is a son of God, people. That was God in the flesh. And, and uh, Mary had that. That's amazing. Can you imagine him growing up, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, just as a normal child, but never sinned one time? Mary, 12. Uh, they're answering the doctor's questions. They knew, they knew there's something special about that kid. But when they talked to him, he was in the he was equal with God, but yet took on the likeness of men. He had fingers, eyes, ears, nose, just like we do. But he had we got one thing he didn't have, and that's a sinful nature. He didn't have a sinful nature. You know the old saying, the old saying, preachers and Great theologians have debated for centuries, could Jesus sin? That's one of them questions like, uh, if he was man, could he have sinned? Because if he couldn't, he wouldn't be tempted, and blah, 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 blah. And Phil Kidd gave the best definition and answer to that I've ever heard a man give, and I've heard hundreds. Um, he said, uh, Jesus couldn't sin. He couldn't because he wouldn't, and he wouldn't because he couldn't. That'll pop your little theological brain right there, buddy. He couldn't cause he wouldn't, and he wouldn't cause he couldn't. He didn't sin, he couldn't sin. He's God. He had, you get your sinful nature from your daddy. I, I pass on Adam right on down to me and you. And his daddy was God. He was in his blood. He had God's blood running in his according to Acts chapter 20. God's blood. Think about that. That's an incarnation, people. That's shouting ground. So we say, away in a manger, no crib for you. But listen, buddy, I wasn't no normal kid there. Uh, uh, silent night, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Uh, police got me now. Police got me now. I, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, all, them, all them good Christmas songs like that. <laughs> uh, all them great Christmas carols in the book. Uh, it, it's uh, it's, uh, uh, it's glory to the newborn king, y'all. Hallelujah. He's equal with God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You know, you know, ways God, he let people bow down and worship him. And never told him to get up. Somebody bowed down and worship an angel. The angel said, don't. Don't worship me. I'm just a messenger. Thomas bowed down and said, my Lord, my God. And Jesus never said a word to rebuke him. In Revelation, he said, uh, I am he that liveth and alive forevermore. And they fell down and worshiped him in Revelation chapter 21. So he's God. I mean, there's no... You got to get off the fence. There ain't no he might have been, could have been, should, maybe was. He either was or he wasn't. Either Jesus Christ was God or he was the biggest imposter the world's ever seen. 
And I, I don't say that disrespectful because he wasn't an imposter. But he, he was the greatest con artist that's ever come along or he was who he says he was. And we know that he was who he says he was. Hallelujah. He maketh no mistake. He, he, would, he was without guile who did no sin. Who did no sin. Neither was any guile found in his mouth. Can you imagine that? Always made the right decision. Always said the right words. Always. I, I, we can't even, we, I can't even imagine that. Uh, I heard a man said one time that he, he hadn't sinned in 18 years or something like that. Yeah, whatever. Um, you, you've sinned in 18 minutes. Uh, the thought of foolishness is sin. Amen. Just being lazy is a sin. Eating too much is a sin. A little bit of pride is sin. We're, that's all we are, buddy. We're a blob of it. We've sinned, come short of the glory of God. Uh, but he never, ever, ever took one step out of God's will. 33 and one and a half years. Amen? Man, that's, that's wonderful. Now, he became obedient. That ain't all. Look here what it said. Being found fashioned as a man, verse 8, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. There's the Son of God humbling himself. So if, it ain't, if he can do it, we can do it. And if he did it, we should do it. I, the Lord can't use people that walk around with their heads stuck up like this all the time thinking they're better than every, other, other people. Whatever you've got, God, give it to you. If, if he's give you, a, if you've got a brilliant mind or you've got a, a, a nice home to live in or if you've got money or if you've got looks or talent or ability, you know who gave that to you? God. God. You ain't got no right to say Boy, ain't I something? No, no, you ain't nothing. He can take it just like that. Them, them, them ball players and them movie stars, son, they walk out on that red carpet and just soak the glory in, boy. I just soak it in. And the, the, you know what Jesus did? He humbled himself and became obedient even to the death of the cross. But there's an example of Paul. Instead of fighting back, instead of demanding your way, Instead of punishing people for what they've done to you, he became obedient. Even he got hungry like we did. He cried like we cry. He rejoiced like we rejoice. And he died a painful, slow, and shameful death. Did you know? Did you know? The death on the cross was considered the most shameful. Most of the time they were naked, beat, hyped almost to death, blood everywhere, hanging in shame in front of the whole community on a cross. And the reason they did that, because they thought, well, he's getting off too easy to just kill them. Let them suffer a while. And they put them on them crosses. Sometimes them people live 48 hours on the cross. And finally your lips would be so parched you, you threw up vomit all over yourself because of the pain and the hurt and, and the blood and your hemorrhaging and your leg cramps and the agony. And they said there's times where somebody be on the cross a long time that birds would be actually pecking at their blood trying to, trying to eat them before they even died. It was a shameful thing. It was a shame. It wasn't like you see him on the cross and he's like this and he sort of looks like a girl. You know, and he's got a little hole here and a little hole here. And Buddy, you couldn't even tell what he looked like. They'd beat him. He looked like hamburger meat, y'all. And you know why he did that? For that cuss word you said. And for that lie I told. And for that beer you drank. Or for that party you had. Or that sin you committed. Jesus did that for you and for me. He became obedient to the death of the cross. They had cramps. Sometimes, sometimes they would, uh, they would uh, die prematurely. I mean, you know, they couldn't take it. And uh, it, the, the Bible said they plowed up his back like taking a plow and plowing in the ground. They dug into his back. They took that they call it the cat of nine tails. That's not scripture, but that tradition says that. I don't know. But it said they had a, a club, like, a, like a, a club about that long. And now that club had leather straps coming way out of it. Nine of them. And in them leather straps they had little sharp bits of glass uh, or rock, and they just take it like a whip, go, and and it tie somebody up like this. They tie them like that, and they didn't have, they had no clothes on, 
And so when they took that whip and went slap, it wrapped around them right here and they just jerked it. And it cut them right here and the bowels would fall out many times. And they died before they ever got to the cross. Amen. You ought to thank God he loved you that much. That's somebody worth serving, people. People wonder why I'm such a fanatic and I take it serious because that's what he done for me. Nothing I can do is too much for him. Anything I can give up is nothing compared to what he done for me. He deserves all of our service. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves every day of our life committed to him. God help us to get rid of our petty little wicked sin that we know that nailed him to the cross. Amen? Listen, y'all. An old song says, When I survey the wondrous cross, the cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. My shame, my wickedness. How about, how about on a hill far away set an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. It was on that old cross. Jesus died and shed blood. And I'll cherish the old rugged cross and, and, and exchange it one day for a crown. My, 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 my. Who in the world would ever want something different than that? If that ever gets real to you, the things of the world just go flat. Ain't I feel so sorry for people uh, uh, that, that hate him. And, and a lot of people in the world hate him. They don't even know why they do. They hate him because they're so confused. I feel so sorry for him. I've seen old, old picture old Mick Jagger. And Lord, he's about 80-something now. Uh, me, and I, I feel sorry for that man. He's a wicked, evil man. On his way to hell, I'm, I'm sure, unless he got saved l lately. But I, I feel so sorry for him. All he's ever known is that old rock. They said, man, ain't they cool? The Rolling Stones are still rocking in their 80s. Oh, they're pitiful looking. They're pitiful. They look like a piece of beef jerky or something. Like that, or trying, to, trying to be, I mean, and that's all they got. That's all they got. All they got is, I'm famous, I'm famous, I'm famous, I'm famous, and get old and lay in a bed and die. That's it. Whew. Thank God he got us out of there. Thank God we got a hope tonight. Thank God there's something bigger and better than what this world has to offer. Amen? Lord, have mercy. He took on the form of a servant. Here he was the son of God, and he's washing the disciples' feet. They said one time, this missionary, this guy went to a mission field, and he wasn't, he wasn't a Christian. And he saw this missionary who was a woman. And she's down in this hut in the jungle. Having two or three little old babies. And they had diseases. And she's cleaning out their, their human waste. And down on her knees rubbing that. And he looked at that woman. And he said, I wouldn't do that for a million dollars. And she said, I wouldn't either. But I'd do it for Jesus Christ. Amen. There's your secret right there. When you bring a kid to church. Like Kelly brought that guy to church Sunday night, Sunday morning. I don't know why he, he vanished, man. His wheelchair was still out there. <laughs> I believe he got caught up. <laughs> he, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, like, you know what? I wouldn't do that for $100, but I'd do it for Jesus. Amen. I wouldn't preach on the street uh, for, for money, but I'd do it for Jesus. Amen. He humbled himself. He washed the disciples' feet. And you know when you're more like him than any time in your life? When you're doing something for other people. When you're a servant to others. How, um, one of the boys, is Ethan or Spencer, what I'm out in which, wrote me a, a card on my birthday or something. And, and one of them said that. He said, I want to have a, a servant's heart. And I thought, boy, you don't find many teenagers that say, I want to have a servant's heart. Most people say, well, if it, ain't, if it don't benefit me, to heck with you. I want what I want. I want. You don't find many young people that say, I'm going to give my life for other people because God's been good to me. That's the right way to look at it. That's the right way to look at it. Now, our nature is, is not like that. Our nature is me first, you next. And we have to fight that all the time, that human nature. But when we're right with the Lord, we, we give for others like, like he did. Hurriedly, um, he didn't post his credentials. He didn't put out a resume and say, anybody need healing? Oh, come on, I'll come over to your town and heal everybody and you can buy me a brand new camel. No, he didn't do it. 
he humbled himself, made himself have no reputation. Uh, and uh, he, had, he had the credentials, but he didn't go around bragging about it. I noticed that people's always bragging about their degrees and their accomplishments usually ain't, ain't, don't have a whole lot. If you, if you really got it, you don't have to brag about it. Amen. If you got the real thing, you don't have to brag about it. Uh, I, know, uh, I know girls like that, and I know boys like that, and all they talk about is how pretty they are, how good looking they are, and all that. Look, if you got it, you don't have to brag about it all the time. Everybody knows it. Amen. And you don't have to convince them. Uh, you, you don't have to brag about what you have or what you can do. It's obvious. It's obvious after a while. But he made himself of no reputation. He didn't have a booking agent. He didn't have no commercials on TV. He didn't have no, I mean, can you imagine that? No Facebook, no, no, he didn't advertise himself. He made himself of no reputation and just kept doing what God wanted him to do. Kept doing what God, wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Lord, I preached a sermon on that whole. I preached a sermon on Jesus, name above all names. I don't know if it's online or not, but it might be. But years ago, the youth rally, 25 years ago, uh, I said uh, his name is a prophesied name. He was named that before he was born. His name is predetermined name. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. His name is a proclaimed name. His name been preached more than any other name that's ever been in history. His name is a powerful name. The disciples said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. His name um, is a, is a uh, persecuted name. There's been more people cuss that name. People use that name as a cuss word. Remember old John Lennon? He and old Mick came up about the same time. John Lennon and them guys, you know, I mentioned them a lot, but them, them Beatles was, was sent by the devil, people. They was. They was. And I mean, I thought they hung the moon when I was 11, 10, 11 years old. And we patterned our bands after them and everything. And they had, but them, them songs had double meaning. They was wicked. They were drug saturated. And they, then, and then they were immorality. And then the spirit got in them when John Lennon said, we're more popular than Jesus now. John Lennon said, Christianity will go. This is back in the 60s. He said, Christianity done. It will vanish and shrink. I'm right and I'll be proved right. Well, guess who vanished and shrunk? He did. I'm not glad about what happened to him. But he, he, he didn't live long after that. Uh, uh, and I'm not happy about that. Maybe, maybe there's a slight change. Maybe. But it's, it's not good. It's, it didn't look good for him. But he was a very, very wicked, evil person. And, and... When, when they went to India and they come back with all that guhu Maharaji, everybody in the whole country worshipped the Beatles, so they brought Eastern religion into America and that's why yoga and everything's so popular right now, and drugs are so popular, the Beatles brought that in there. I don't blame it all on them, but they're the, they're, they're the worst ones responsible for it. The whole culture changed after that, during the 60s. And that's when the rock concerts came. That's when Manson murders happened. That's when the uh, the homosexuals come out of the closet in New York City and said, we're out and we ain't going back in. Everything changed during that time. And John said, uh, we're more popular than Jesus. Well, I hate to tell you this, but there's thousands of buildings like this right here. Every Sunday, groups of people meet and brag and worship on that one name, and it ain't John Lennon. They pull out a few once in a while. People go commemorate his death like Elvis or somebody. But buddy, he got the name above every name. He got the name above every name. And, and that name, ever kneel bow, uh, it's a persecuted name. It's, it's, uh, it's a precious name. Amen? It's a, it's a prevailing name. That's one you claim the victory in, in Jesus' name. It's, it's a name above every name. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, a, it's a holier than Mary's. It's holier than Muhammad. It's, it's holier than, it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful name, Jesus. It's an easy name. Little kids can say, Jesus. It's whispered by children out by their bedside at night before they drift off to sleep. In the, it's carried out, called on in hospital beds around the world in rooms 
um, in, in in desperation. It's um, it's hollowed out under shell fire on the battlefield and publicly proclaimed from thousands of pulpits every Sunday morning, brother. That's a name above every name. Ain't no name above that name. No one. Every kneel bow. Every politician. Every musician. Every athlete. Every atheist. Amen. Ever agnostic, Bill Maher, Kathy Griffith, Joy Behar, Whoopi Goldberg, whatever her name is, all every one of them's going to bow down and say, "Jesus Christ is Lord." They say, "I'll never do it." Yeah, you will too, buddy. The Lord will say, "And right over yonder, ain't nothing underneath you for a million miles, and a big white, great big throne." And the angels of God around there. And you look over there and there's a lake of fire. Like that's the sun flattened out. And buddy you look at that. And you think oh my goodness. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Blue House Ender. Will Bow. Muhammad Ali. Cassius Clay. I didn't want to go to the army. Uh, Protestant will bow. Every Buddhist will bow. Every Brahmin will bow. Shamans and people like. Jim Morrison, the doors, you know, uh, Jim, the night before old Jim Morrison died and went to hell, they had a concert somewhere and he performed. They said he's so messed up he didn't even mind. He said, uh, Riders on the store, killer on the store. Oh, yeah. And he couldn't hardly stand up and sung, Come on, baby, I'm a And his fire went out, buddy. Fire went out. I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm saying that because. People worship people like that. Every athlete, every Jew, every Palestinian, every Muslim, every Protestant, every Satanist, Anton LaVey will bow his knee and say, Jesus is Lord. Glory to God, y'all. Charles Manson, hit the deck, son. Get down there. Act like you got some sin. Thomas Paine, Hitler, Adolf Hitler, I will bow down and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Michael Jackson. Amen. Michael Jordan, hope he already has, uh, but uh, everybody will. You do it now or then one. Karl Marx, Charles Darwin, every single one of them. James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, amen. Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, uh, all, all of them people. Katy Perry, uh, 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 what's her name? Little girl used to be Miley, Miley, uh, 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 Miley Cyrus. Every one of them will one day get down and say, He's Lord. Now, if you've already done that, you got it whooped. You got the good. You, got the good. you do it now. You, get, you go to heaven. You do it then. You cast into hell. Too late. Too late. You say, well, once they get down, won't the Lord take them to heaven? Nope. He's, they're just all going to admit he was the right way and they was wrong. And then it's going in the lake of fire. I didn't write it. That's just the way it's going to be. Glory to God. Amen. He's going to have a universal dominion, y'all. He's highly exalted. He's exalted over heaven. He's exalted over earth. He's exalted over everything that's under the earth. That's something weird there. Those things that are under the earth, a lot in the Bible about that kind of stuff. Uh, that are down there somewhere. He's over every bit of it. He's got the name that's powerful as an attorney. That's right, brother. Uh, Brahm, Beethoven, Bach, uh, uh, the guy that wrote all the, the classics and the uh, and, uh, all the other music, the, the hillbillies, I'm talking about Hank Williams, Senior, Junior, <laughs> the third, <laughs> every one of every one of Bill Monroe, I mean, all them guys, Elvis, all every single one, if they didn't do it here, and some of them hopefully did, they'll do it then. For God hath given him a name which is above every name, and every knee's gonna bow, and every tongue's gonna confess. And I don't care how big they are. The old saying is, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. They'll hit their knees one of these days. Shoe's going to be on the other foot, people. God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready. I'll give it to him tonight, gladly. I'll gladly get down on my knees right here tonight and say, I am nothing. I'm a no good sinner. Lord Jesus, you died for my sin. You're everything. I ain't too proud to do that. I ain't too proud to do that. 
But that's the only hope you got in this world. And there are people right here in Burke County that would literally die before they'd get down on their knees in front of people and admit Jesus is God and, and die for their sins. That's how proud and stubborn they are. But they're going to do it anyway. You're going to do it anyway. Every knee shall bow. All right. I'll stop right there. Uh, let's bow our head and have a word of prayer here tonight. Every head bowed. We'll take just a minute this evening while our heads are bowed and search our heart. And I want to ask you a question. All y'all that are in here, young people, parents, who's on the throne in your life? Are you on the throne? If you're on the throne, he's on the floor. If he's on the throne, you're in the floor. It can't be both. You can't share it. You can't say, well, he's my Lord, but I'm going to do what I want to do. That ain't the way it works. You can't say, well, he's my Savior, but he ain't really my Lord. No, that's the way you get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whose service call upon the name of the Lord. Not the Savior, the Lord. You got to take him as Lord. Take him as Lord. Right now, make him Lord over everything in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you bless every single person here tonight. Lord, I pray for those that may be struggling, may be hurting, maybe has a special need tonight, that you'd meet that need and help us to realize that all of our needs are met in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you love our sins. Lord, we can never repay you for it. Help us to grab every person we can and take them to heaven with us. Bless us now as we prepare for the big day on Sunday. I pray if it could be your will that you hold the rain off for us Lord, to pick up the kids Sunday morning. If that could be your will, or at least when we're getting them out of here, God, we ask this in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you'd give us a big day. Lord, may souls be saved. May, may parents be saved. May lives be touched and challenged. Bless all of our bus workers as they, as they prepare and they go get the gifts this week and get the shopping. And Lord, give them bodily rest. Help them not to waste their time. Help them, Lord, to use it wisely and prepare and be ready for Sunday morning. God, do a great, mighty Holy Ghost work here. Lord, I pray for winter camp that you just send a great move of your spirit and revival. Bless, bless all the preachers, the singers, and everything that's said or done. And what you do, we'll thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. You're at liberty to go. Everybody, be careful getting out, and uh, we'll see y'all there too, Lord willing.